Hey everyone, so I have just been a little bookworm this week. I've literally been plowing through books so quickly. So I did finish Awakens, which was the newest House of Night novel that I talked about in my last literature. I was already like halfway done with it. I finished this book in three days. And I would have done it in one because it's not a very long book and it's a very quick read. But I was having to read like late at night after doing lots of stuff during the day. So I wasn't able to just curl up in bed with my book like I like to do. If I had, I would have finished it in a day. It was a very quick read and to tell you the truth, the next one doesn't come out till November of this year and I am already like craving it. Like I want to read the next book so badly. Now this book came out a while ago and I didn't read it right away. I've had my hands on it for a really long time and I just, it was never the book that I reached for. And I started wondering like why that was because this next book I'm craving already. Like I want it to come out. I would not be surprised if I was at the bookstore the day it came out and wanted to finish reading it that night. Like that's how um, attached to the story I am and how much I want to read the next book. With this one that didn't happen and I think it was because, spoilers for this series, um, so if you haven't read the book before this one or this one, you might not want to watch the rest of this movie or video. I just don't want to spoil it for you guys, so I would feel really bad. Um, so I just want to give a little warning. But at the end of the last book, the one before this, Zoe dies and goes to the other world with Nyx, and you have the whole thing with Kelowna going on, and he's being um, controlled by Neferet, and like there's all these different storylines, and Stark goes there to save her, and her soul's going to shatter, and it's a really, really intense book. And I think, honestly, I don't really know if they could move after that point to the next storyline very easily. So I feel like this book was the connection book. Like it bridged the last book to the next book. I don't feel like it stands in and of itself as a great novel by itself. I feel like it kind of is like a connection book between the one before and the next one because you had to because the last storyline was so momentous and there was so much happening. It was almost like the last book was such a huge moment that it took literally an entire book to get the story back on track for it to go like a different path because it was kind of, it kind of hit that point, that wall in the storyline where there had to be like a big change. You know, Zoe came back and now what happens? Like now this book, she literally is like stuck on this island for half of the book. And to be quite honest, I did not get bored in this book at all. So I don't want you guys to think that I like got bored or like, I don't know, it was slow in parts. It wasn't, but there was like for about half the book, I was wondering where the story was going to go. The island that she's on kind of reminded me of the land of the Lotus Eaters from the Odyssey. It's basically this island that he lands on. And I think this like mythological island is actually touched on in a lot of stories. I think there was one in Narnia that was kind of similar too, where you basically land on this island and the food is so good and there's this magic surrounding it that you start forgetting about home or caring about getting off the island and you, you're kind of stuck in this like magical place where after the longer you stay there the more you forget that you're on an island that's not your home and you start like forgetting your outside world and you want to stay there forever and I kind of felt like the island that she's on the Scottish island with the Scottish vampire queen is kind of like that like she starts like all the magic starts getting to her and she starts not wanting to go back home she chooses not to go back to school with her friends and she just wants to stay there with Stark forever and like live on this island which I guess to her sounds like a great idea because she's getting to avoid all this outside like nonsense that's going on but at the same time I kind of got that sense of like the Scottish island was like working its magic on her and that she was starting to forget that she needed to go and fulfill her duties as a high priestess. Having read the entire book, looking back on it now, I do not think that the Scottish Vampire Queen or her island was anything negative, but for a while in the story I was starting to get a sense of like is this Scottish queen, like, does she have an evil side to her? Is she a good person? Like, I was kind of wondering these things throughout the book, but I do think now, like, after having read the entire book, that she's totally on the right side. I just, I kind of started getting the creeps when Zoe started, like, wanting to stay there forever and all this stuff and, like, not wanting to go back with her friends, and it just didn't seem like Zoe, so I felt like something was going on that was keeping her there. Another spoiler alert if you haven't finished this book, but I love what happens at the end to the Raven Mocker. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Is it like Rehem or something? Rehem? I'm trying to like find it in the book so I can... I don't even know. I don't even know where it is. I can't even find it. Oh, there it is. Rephaim. R-E-P-H-A-I-M. Rephaim. I don't know. Whoever the Raven Mocker is, I just think like the ending thing with that is so sweet and I was not expecting it at all. But there's that whole like Beauty and the Beast thing going on with him and Stevie Ray and I just love the way that it ended and I feel like there's a twist. Like I feel like Kelowna is not a nice 
person. So I'm kind of wondering why he let him go. I wonder like how it's going to benefit Kelowna. Honestly, this is one of my very favorite series that I'm reading right now. And I'm really excited that, that she keeps coming out with more books because I can't wait till the November one comes out. And that is not going to be like this one where I have it in my possession for a long time and I just never get around to reading it. No, I'm going to read that one right away because the, the way this one ended, like I cannot wait to know what happens next. And I had forgotten how captivating these stories get me. Like, I get pulled into these novels and I just want to, like, stay there and live in this world. It's definitely a series I recommend. And for those of you that have not finished the series or have not read this book, I'm kind of jealous. I kind of wish that I could, like, erase my memory and go back in time and read it all over again because I want to enjoy the story. Like, I don't know what's happening. So I cannot wait till the next one comes out in November. And the next book I'm working on which I don't know if it's like something with me going on right now, but I'm just loving books more than normal. Like I've always been like a big bookworm, but for some reason lately, I've just been loving the story so much more than normal because this next book that I'm working on, The White Queen, I'm already almost halfway done with it. Not quite halfway, no, like a third of the way done. But I read all of this in one night and um, I'm kind of in love with this book. So this is going to get an incredible review. I mean, I can't imagine that something horrible is going to happen in the next two thirds of the book where I'm not going to want to give it a, a good review, but I am totally in love with this book. So if you guys want to go pick this book up, The White Queen, I'll put all the information in the information box below this video. If you guys want to go read this with me and that way when I do my literature, you guys can do like response videos and stuff. That's how these literature videos are supposed to work, but I'm especially loving this book. If you guys like like old timey stories of like old like royal families and princesses and all the stories kind of surrounding that it's like true stories mixed with a little bit of fiction you would love this like I I'm so in love with it it's about like princesses and love and war and like all that like really girly stuff the Disney movies were based off of go read this book and then when I do my literature we can all like interact with it and stuff and if you have read House of Night or you've read this book or you have anything to say about the series at all please post a comment or a video response to this video and yeah I'll see you guys later also my favorite part on my new website ellenblair.com is the book corner in the forum I came up with that myself cuddle up and get cozy and let's talk about books that was totally my idea um, yeah, I love it. And I'm already getting like recommendations from people on the forum that like write about books that they love for future literatures. These ones, obviously I'd already purchased and stuff. I haven't done like a major book haul since the website's gone up. It's only been up for a little while. So go check out ellenblair.com and you can register and talk about like all different books if you're a book lover there as well. So yep. Um, ramble, ramble, ramble. I'm in a talkative mood. Can't you tell? I will see you guys in my next video and have a great day. Bye.